Beautiful day out today. What is going on, guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all doing well and having a really great day today. Solar has been absolutely killing it. If you guys can see that, we're looking at 4,126 watts going out. I got a bunch of stuff running in the solar trailer. But today, we need to get this other panel set up over here on the shed hooked up to my second inverter and try to get that thing up and running. I'm probably not going to get everything done today, but I'm going to try to at least run the wires from these panels and get them into my house. So let's kind of go downstairs and go over the plans real quick, and then we can uh, go from there. So this is where we ran the lines previously, or I ripped up the lines previously from the pergola lines that were going across the ground into the solar trailer and i ended up putting them under my deck under here into the house as you can see we got one line right there and the other one is just waiting to get installed so i'm going to be putting another piece of pipe 90 and it's going to run down this foundation right over here going to the shed right now this is where i ended up installing the solar setup which is running nicely i got these two boxes right here the ae pro uh, AE Box Pro rather in the Mini Doge 3 Plus over here pulling 760 watts as of right now the other 3000 something is actually running out in the trailer but this is the setup here and that's the second inverter that is not on yet my batteries today are fully charged which is awesome so I'm pulling as much as I can right now in the trailer actually I could turn on some more but it's pretty maxed out. I don't want it to get too hot in there. I don't have any exhaust fans going. So anyways, we do have a few things I want to go over and show you guys what my plans are. So just before we get into all of this stuff right here, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor. Crypto Miner Bros is the ultimate destination for all of your crypto mining needs. Founded in 2018, this company specializes in top quality ASIC miners from brands like Bitmain, Goldshell, and many others. Whether you're a newbie or a pro, they offer competitive prices, fast shipping, and easy payment options worldwide. Pay with bank transfer, Bitcoin, or even other cryptocurrencies, no cash needed. The prices you see on their website include taxes, shipping, and DDP to your door, so there are no surprises at checkout. Join tens of thousands of satisfied customers who trust Crypto Miner Bros for their hardware fulfillment, transparent prices, and world-class service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com, link down below. Okay, so this guy right here might look a little bit familiar. So on my solar pergola, I actually installed one of these as well. This is a surge protected dual breaker um, box basically to control each string on the pergola, right? So this is gonna be going inside the shed itself to control the strings the same exact way. So let me just take off this lid. I actually already unscrewed it so I can show you guys the inside. So inside this guy, right, you have the positive and the negative coming through the breaker. This will turn the power on. Red is dead. That's how you remember it electrical wise, right? If it's red, that means it is live. We have the positive and negative coming out and that is what will run into my house. Even though I do have AC surge protectors on this panel, it is a great idea to have DC ones wired outside with the panels as well. So that is uh, what we're gonna be doing here. And then I will be grounding this unit right through here, down into the ground outside at the shed, right? Then what we're gonna do is take these guys. So I got four of these. I think I only need two really, realistically, because I'm probably going to, again, place this inside the shed somewhere. So it's just kind of out of the elements. And I'm probably going to go right through the floor of the shed itself into the ground so i'll probably only need two of these boots just for the roof to get into the actual shed itself so this guy is basically to weather tight transition from outside to inside right you would see these on like an off-grid camper van or a trailer that people just have solar on and they want to be able to get it inside the house so what i'm going to do is this thing actually has a little bit of a rubber gasket already on it but these are cheap so what i'm going to do is cock the hell out of this with the same roof sealant that I actually used for the solar panel install. I'm gonna screw this down to the roof, get the wires into it and the wires, you know, into a hole that I actually drilled through the roof right there. But this is probably gonna be in a different video when I actually go to hook everything up and start turning it on because I don't really wanna get on the roof today and I have plenty of other stuff I need to do like mount this box in the actual shed itself and then um, obviously run all the pipes or the wires rather over to where I am going to be putting this if I could get this thing lined back up there we go good enough all right 
maybe kind of all right let's go outside now and just uh, actually you know what see where we can put this box in the shed shall we all right so over here initially I was thinking I was just gonna mount it on the outside which I kind of still want to do to be honest because it is a weather type box it doesn't really matter if it's out in the elements but mm, I don't know I am going to be putting a uh, a roof kind of like this at an angle like another lean-to style angle and I'm gonna have like a fire pit and a bunch of chairs right here where this trailer is eventually that is the plan anyways off the side of this shed so we can like hang out next to it but for now this is where I have all my shit stored, right? So I got to uh, get a bunch of stuff out of here, but I want to get this thing pretty much mounted. You know what? I might just put a uh, a board on the back wall of some sort and just mount this back there. Probably to the left side, though, because that's where the wires are actually going to be coming down. Yeah, probably something like that. But on the inside, last bay, if that makes sense, way down there. I got to move this pool all this other shit, but I think that might be a good idea. Yeah, we're gonna do that. I think that's a good idea. So now that we get that kind of situated and figured out, I think that'll be a better idea overall than coming outside here and doing it here. But um, what I'll end up doing then is, man, real close to these trees, but I'll end up coming up underneath the shed, right? And we're gonna be going through the floor on the inside so you won't be able to see anything here, but I do need to dig a trench from like the corner of the shed all the way across down here somehow you know i'm probably gonna do it out here actually probably just gonna dig it right along here right along my fence exact same path as the other time uh the other wires rather you can kind of see where i pulled them up right here see that little loop i'm just gonna continue that straight and dig the trench i guess let's do it so what do you think not too bad not crazy deep but I got it at least from the corner of the fence there. I still gotta go along the fence, but I don't have time for that right this second. I have to go get my kids from school. So I'll continue that when I get back and the sun's probably gonna be down by the time I'm done. So this is what it looks like right now. I have it actually just kind of hooking under the shed. And then I ended up making a decision with this box right here, right? So instead of going all the way down to the back, I did move the pool so I could actually get back there. But I think I'm gonna put it like right here. Cause why not i actually have to get everything coming down you know obviously from the roof so what does it matter if it's at the front or the back of the uh shed i think it would be easier here that way it doesn't get buried if i ever need to shut it off or put shit in here i'm not climbing over it to actually shut this off so i'm just gonna put a two by six like a couple of them probably flat against the back wall here and then screw this right to that so it's kind of behind the actual face of the studs which I think is a good idea. That way, if I lean anything on the wall, again, I'm not really uh, affected by this, even if I do have to block it for whatever reason. But hopefully, that's not the case. So, anyways, let me, uh, I guess, finish digging this up, and we will uh, we'll see what it looks like. And look at that. We beat the sun going down just by a little bit. All right, trench isn't crazy deep, but guess what? I don't give a shit. We're running it like this. It's going to go in here. It's going to be buried by the dirt. A couple inches, not a huge deal, right? I probably should have conduit and it should definitely be like two feet down, but I don't give a shit. Again, like I said, this is how I had it actually going into the trailer not long ago over here. I got to dig it down a little bit on this uh, corner here, but just so you guys could see pretty much where I'm going to be running this wire. Let's uh, check out the other side quick. As you can see, I just flipped up the grass. Nice little trench all the way over. And I'm glad I wasn't stomping on that thing to dig it down too deep because that's one of my sprinkler lines right there. And then I'm going to be putting it along the foundation all the way across over to where it's going to go into the house. So now we got to go see if I have enough wire on the uh, spools that I have or if I'm going to have to break out a new one. As you guys know, the wire from the pergola, I think I had 500 foot rolls. I can't remember how long that was. I think it was 500 feet, wasn't it? Maybe it was 300. I'm not sure. I don't know, kind of gauging off the side here and then off of this, I think I might have enough. It says 500, I think it's 500 feet. I think it was 500 feet. So theoretically I should have enough on both these rolls, the negative and the positive to get from the corner of the shed into my house where it needs to be. So I'm gonna try to use those. And if not, I do have two brand new rolls actually in the side of the shed. So let's see how this goes. Can I just give myself some props here? This little uh, stamper for the ground to make it level is, uh, or to pack it down when you're doing a patio. Works freaking amazing to pull this wire. <laughs> this is a riot. I think I'm gonna have plenty actually just by pulling off what I've already pulled off. It seems like nothing is off that roll to be honest. So 
I guess, uh, I don't know. I think, I think we're looking good, hopefully. All right, so it is gonna be a little tight, and to be honest, I don't know what I was thinking. I forgot I have to have two runs of each color, so I definitely wouldn't have had enough to make this whole thing go. So let's uh, show you guys real quick where we ended up. As you can see, line's right there. Got it curled over here. I had it looped back kind of like the other set was when I uh, did that other video. You guys go check that out if you didn't see me wire the first uh, pergola there. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna work or it should be pretty close. But see, at the same time, I'm kind of nervous about it. I don't know. I don't want it to be too short and then I'm completely fucked, if that makes sense. So um, what I'm probably gonna do, I don't know. I might open the other roll and get the other roll in there and then we will see how that's gonna go. I really I really don't know. I don't want that to be too short and then I'm screwed. Like I said, it's just gonna be, that would make my life way harder than it actually needs to be. And I think it is gonna be a little bit short, probably like 10 feet short, no joke. Cause I gotta get this turned under there, up in the wall there. And yeah, it's gonna be, man, that would be super freaking tight and a risk I'm really not willing to take. That kind of sucks. All right, let me open the brand new rolls again. I got them in here. Let me get this stuff ran. The sun's going down, so I'll show you guys everything once it is uh, from A to B. There are the rolls right there. All right, we got all the lines ran. This is the next day, as you guys can tell. It's been freaking pouring all morning, and that sucked. I finished this up this morning in the rain, which was terrible, but you can see the lines ran down the trench, right? I set up both rolls just like this, and I pulled them at the exact same time all the way across to where they needed to be. So I have a decent amount left on each one of these rolls, which is pretty cool for a future, obviously. And this is the first run that I have right here. I taped the ends so I know which string is uh, string one and string two over at this side. And I actually tried to land these two in the other 6,000 XP, but I ran into a hiccup. And that's right here at this little, little guy where this uh, connector goes into. I'm not sure what this is called. I really have no idea. But this is the part. And unfortunately, <clears throat> if you guys can see, how this works is you stick the wire in the bottom, right? Tighten the screw, and it squeezes the wires together. The back half of the bottom prong, if you can see, there's like solid there, and it's gone there. It literally broke off like at the weld on the back side. So my man uh, over at Signature Solar, my rep, is actually going to take care of us and either send us a whole new new unit to uh, replace or he's going to see if he can locate me uh, another one of these. So we're going to be kind of dead in the water until I get that hooked up. I mean, I could hook up the right side and call it a day, but either way, they're not hooked up on the roof. Um, I'm just pumped that the lines are in here and they're good to go. So again, I landed the, uh, the first string positive but the negative is the one I had the issue with and these things are stupid easy to like hook on you literally just hook it and snap it in and it's more or less just a coupling right to, to connect the power from this wire to uh, the wire going into it so either way that's kind of where I'm at I kind of got stuck there so yeah we're good we're still operational with this one but this one right here is going to stay off until I can figure out what we're going to do but I do have the second string in here everything is all clipped up through the ceiling through the uh, underneath the deck which is awesome let me go show you that real quick oh here oh man and dude it was like a monsoon like this trench filled itself in washing all the dirt <laughs> from this morning it was brutal anyways you guys can see right here we have the lb right there wires are in it i backfilled that same thing over there you can see that's the one coming from the pergola this is the one coming from the shed so we are freaking good to go run along the foundation over to the shed now we just got to hook that bitch up and call it a day so what i'm going to end up doing out here is just cutting the lengths off of these rolls long enough to get it into the shed and in the next video what we're going to do together is drill a hole through there somewhere get that breaker box mounted the uh, surge protected breaker box right here mount it on the wall and we're going to hook it up and then we're going to get up there and we're going to hook up the uh, panels to it as well so stay tuned for that obviously i can't do it today because it is still real shitty out and definitely uh a chance to rain again so anyways you guys have a great day i appreciate you for hanging out with me i'm going to backfill this and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace out oh for anybody wondering this is direct burial wire so you technically don't need um conduit but yeah, like I said, conduit would probably be a good idea, but I just don't care.